the start of a new paradigm, starting with my battle with the Balrog Mercury. As a very young child, I had many high fevers. As an Ivy League trained registered nurse, my mother had easy access to antibiotics where she worked at the hospital. We now know that antibiotics like tetracycline impair the development of the tooth enamel. Since I lacked the protection of that enamel, my teeth developed many cavities. Our family dentist was trained to enlarge those cavities and fill the new larger holes in my teeth with what they called silver amalgam fillings. Silver amalgam fillings are over 50% mercury when they are placed in the teeth. Since mercury is a liquid metal, it allows the amalgam or mixture of metals to flow. It's easy for the dentist to place the material in the enlarged cavity they have drilled into the tooth. The amalgam does not bond to the tooth, so it must have a shape that will hold itself in mechanically. That means the filling is actually even larger inside the tooth than what you see on the surface. Now, mercury is a toxin. It's illegal to put that filling material in the garbage or down the drain. The amount of mercury in one average size filling is enough to poison a five acre lake. That means it would be hazardous to eat the fish from that lake. But isn't the mercury securely contained inside the filling? No. Remember, it's a liquid, so it leaches out of the filling. The mercury in an amalgam filling has a half-life of 20 years. That means that in 20 years, half of the mercury that used to be in the filling has gone somewhere else. So where else does it go? Everywhere. It leaches out into your mouth and into your food, especially as you are chewing. Chewing gum increases the release of mercury from fillings. Hot food and drink increases the release of mercury because of the temperature. Electromagnetic fields increase the release of mercury even more. And those fields can even come from inside your mouth. When different metals are used in dental materials or other metallic implants elsewhere in the body, they create a battery that moves those metals around the body. Decay often forms underneath amalgams, and that is a problem because pathogenic microbes can transform metallic mercury into mercuric chloride or methylmercury. Those forms are about a thousand times more toxic. And it turns out that the catalyst that methylates mercury is methylcobalamin. That's right, one of the two active coenzyme forms of vitamin B12. In fact, that's why when I'm formulating natural remedies and vitamin B12 is called for, I use a combination of the two active forms that is mostly adenosylcobalamin. Adenosylcobalamin is the coenzyme form of vitamin B12 used by the mitochondria. The last thing I want to do when making a catalyst for healing is to catalyze the transformation of mercury into its methylated organic form, which will be more readily incorporated into the organic chemistry of the body. After all, I did take the Hippocratic Oath, primum non nocere, which means, first, do no harm. Even worse, when a tooth with an amalgam filling gets cracked, the situation can be even worse. Even without a crack, mercury leaks into the blood, lymph, and nerves inside the tooth. Those channels transport mercury directly to the brain. From there, mercury travels down the spinal column and shows up in organs like the genitals. Not good. Here's a story that illustrates why. A colleague of mine was a very athletic young man. He had played football before becoming a doctor. As a busy physician, he didn't have much time to maintain his physical conditioning, but he decided it was time to work out and get back in shape. As soon as he worked out, he wound up flat on his back, unable to recover for days. After this happened several times in a row, he realized the pattern and he contacted me for a consultation. Through electrophysiological testing with German diagnostic electroacupuncture methods, we were able to determine that mercury was a key toxin. We were able to localize an energetic disturbance field to a particular tooth. <clears throat> that tooth was a cracked tooth that contained an amalgam filling. He had even had an intuition that the cracked tooth was somehow connected to his sudden and severe exercise intolerance. But none of the medical professionals that had seen him in his brief hospital stays found any reason for his body's odd reactions. 
Once he had that tooth removed, he began to recover. We supported his process of mercury detoxification by selecting natural remedies for him that balanced his body's electrical impedance in all of the electrical circuits known in oriental medicine as meridians and vessels. As he recovered his strength and ability to work out without landing in the hospital, he also noticed that some rather large lipomas were starting to get smaller. Previously, they had been growing. You see, a lipoma is a benign fatty tumor, a repository for fat-soluble toxins, including mercury. Back to my story. I wound up with 14 very large silver amalgam fillings in my adult teeth. One way to measure how actively that mercury is interacting with the body is to measure the current coming off each filling. The German dentists call it buccal current. You see, the buccal tissue refers to the cheek, and they use the cheek as the contact for the ground electrode when measuring what might more properly be called dental currents. Anyway, mine were off the chart, all 14 of them, and by the time I found that out, I already knew that I was not excreting the mercury because it didn't show up in excretion tissues like my hair or my urine. It was building up year after year in my organs and tissues, like my pancreas, my brain, you name it. The electrophysiological analysis of my body's energy field, or biofield, also showed that I was a mercury non-excreter. Suddenly, so many things made sense, like why I would temporarily forget my phone number, or even my name, at age 30. A friend who was just a few years older said, yeah, that's aging. I experienced that too. I didn't buy it. There had to be a cause. I had suspected mercury from my fillings. I had looked on a material level with lab chemistries, but to no avail. If aging is simply a passage of time, attributing degeneration or loss of function to it completely misses the question of the causal mechanism. You might as well say that something is caused by space. Kind of like saying that gravity is caused by curvature of space-time. But more on that later, and I promise no complicated equations filled with Greek letters. Anyway, I also learned that if I didn't do something drastic about my situation, I would soon be dead from a stroke. In fact, based on comparison of my blood with hundreds of thousands of other patients, it is over 99% certain that I would have died in my 30s. That test result was the one thing that would have motivated me to spend thousands of dollars at my dentist's office over the following year to replace those 14 fillings when my mouth was not even in any pain. That test is so predictive that in European biological medicine, it's known as the medicine of the future. The actual name of the test is Bioelectronics of Vincent, or BEV for short. The science behind the BEV test has become the basis of my five phases of health model of the biophysical terrains of health and disease. We'll get into that later, as it's one of the fundamental dimensions of health in my clinical theory of everything. Just a little background will suffice for now. Vincent was a scientist, a hydrologist, hired by France to study their water quality in the first half of the last century. As a scientist, he proceeded to apply the parameters in the Nernst equation of physics so that he could calculate the actual physical energy content in microwatts in the various water supplies. Since this is not the book for delving into the actual equation, I'll just tell you that he was measuring the levels of three key components of the water's energy. Protons, measured by pH, or the acid-alkaline balance, Electrons, measured by RH2, molecular hydrogen, which is the perfect antioxidant, antioxidant being defined as an electron donor. And photons, measured by resistivity because it's determined by ionization. When enough resonant light energy is absorbed by electrons in matter, it separates the matter into charged particles. <clears throat> Having studied honors chemistry at Dartmouth, and since my major studies also included hydrology, physics, and biology, I found this science to provide a fascinating foundation for observing the biological transformations between health, disease, and back to health again. 
My primary mentor at the time, the chairman of the board of the Canadian College of Naturopathic Medicine, pointed me to a book called The Real Trace Mineral Problem by Michel Deville, founder of the Switzerland Centre de Recherche et Applications sur des Oligoelements, a center for research and application of oligoelements, the trace minerals. The book outlined how people tend to move through the five terrains in a particular order as they get sicker. The same order reverses over time for those who heal themselves. It's a roadmap for healing. This observation distilled from measurements of hundreds of thousands of patients throughout Europe over many decades gave me the basis for my five phases of health and disease. Understanding the five phases of health is important in understanding and navigating your healing process. For example, if you have amalgam fillings, we don't recommend starting to remove them until you get your phase up to at least phase three, regeneration. The only exception is if there's a conventional dental reason, such as a cracked tooth or decay around or underneath the filling. We also caution against planning more than two dental restorations at one visit. When you remove an amalgam, you will be exposed to more mercury temporarily when it's being drilled out. It's essential to work with a biological dentist. They will use low speed drills to take out chunks of amalgam so much less mercury is vaporized in the process. They will also use a rubber dam to prevent you from swallowing the mercury as it is taken out. They will use additional protective protocols as well to ensure you have the best outcome. Find a biological dentist near you through one of the professional organizations, the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology and the International Academy of Biological Dentistry and Medicine. There's links in the, the written form of the post, so you can go right to the, the search forms on their, on their websites. Be sure to give yourself at least a month with specific individualized detoxification support, such as our Accelerated Self-Healing Program, in between those dental restoration visits. By the way, my first book, first written in the 1980s, was promoted by the American Academy of Biological Dentistry, as well as the Institute for Bobiology, the German Institute for Healthy Building Science. If you would like a digital copy of the newest edition, you can go to the link in the post, or of course at Amazon, they have it as well. If you want to let me know about your whole situation so we can help guide you to a higher level of wellness, visit us at acceleratedselfhealing.com. When you watch the free webinar, you'll have the opportunity to sign up for a transformation session with us at no charge. Why is it important to follow the protocol we had a client who was suffering from autoimmune issues. Mercury commonly contributes to all kinds of immune issues. It deranges the immune system. In fact, it can cause any symptom depending on where it is stuck in the body. Because of this, it's known as the great masquerader of the mineral kingdom. It's also the most symptomatic of all the heavy metals. So it doesn't take a large quantity to stir up trouble. It just needs to be stuck in an uncomfortable place. Back in the day when syphilis was the most prevalent venereal disease, or STD, it was also known as the great masquerader of the bacterial world. This similarity between the mineral and the bacteria are also seen in the fact that at that time, mercury was the major treatment used for syphilis. This principle of resonance is expressed in the homeopathic law of similars, like cures like. The first homeopathic medicine discovered by Hahnemann was China, also known as Peruvian bark. It was the main herbal treatment for malaria at that time. And he discovered the principles of homeopathy by first realizing that symptoms caused by overuse of China in a healthy person simulated the symptoms of malaria, the disease the herb was used to treat. Anyway, back to mercury and amalgams. Our client had traveled to a famous well-respected holistic clinic to have her amalgams removed in the hopes of relieving her severe autoimmune condition. The clinic had removed a mouthful of amalgams in one day. With the protection of an intravenous vitamin C and glutathione drip, unfortunately, the protection wasn't enough for her already compromised immune system and her condition worsened greatly. I like to say that we give no medals for healing the fastest. After all, health and longevity are highly correlated. Health and longevity are both slow races. The last one, still getting better, wins. <laughs>